Men are wicked and heartless. Gloria screamed, her voice raw with emotion. Gloria, a woman nearing forty, stood in her small restaurant kitchen, her hands shaking with rage and pain. Tears streamed down her face as she confronted the harsh reality of her situation. For five years, she had poured her heart and savings into a relationship with Alex, believing he was different from the men who had hurt her before. Now she discovered he was engaged to another woman in his village, ready to marry her while still taking Gloria's money. How could you do this to me? Gloria screamed, her voice raw with emotion. I trusted you, Alex. I gave you everything. Alex sat at the table, looking uncomfortable. Gloria, please calm down. It's not what you think. Not what I think, Gloria interrupted, her voice rising. You've been lying to me for years, taking my money, pretending to love me, while you had a fiancé waiting for you. She paced the kitchen, memories of past heartbreaks flooding her mind. Five men had used and discarded her before Alex. Each time she'd picked herself up, focusing on her restaurant. But Alex's betrayal cut deeper than all the others combined. Gloria's hand trembled as she set a plate of food in front of Alex. Eat, she commanded, her voice suddenly quiet and cold. Alex hesitated, sensing something was wrong. Gloria, maybe we should talk about this when you're calmer. Eat the damn food, Gloria shouted, slamming her hand on the table. Reluctantly, Alex began to eat. Gloria watched him intently, her eyes never leaving his face. As the minutes ticked by, Alex's movements became sluggish. He blinked rapidly, trying to focus. What? What did you do? He slurred, struggling to stand. Gloria picked up a knife from the counter, approaching Alex slowly. I'm sorry it came to this, she said, tears still flowing. But you don't deserve to live. You're a wicked soul, Alex. All men are wicked and heartless. Alex's eyes widened in fear as he realized what was happening. Please, Gloria, he begged weakly. Don't kill me. Take me to the hospital. I don't want to die. But Gloria was beyond reason. She lunged forward, grabbing Alex as he tried to escape. Where do you think you're going? She snarled, using the knife to tear at his clothes. They struggled briefly, but the poison had weakened Alex considerably. Gloria kicked him hard, sending him sprawling to the floor. Without hesitation, she straddled him, raising the knife high. This is for every woman you've ever hurt. Gloria hissed. In one swift motion, she brought the knife down, cutting off Alex's manhood. Alex's scream was blood-curdling. Blood poured from the wound as he writhed in agony. Within moments, his eyes glazed over, and he lay still. The reality of what she'd done crashed over Gloria like a tidal wave. She staggered back, dropping the bloody knife. Oh God, she whispered. What have I done? She knew there was no coming back from this. The police would come, she'd go to jail. Her life, her business, everything she'd worked for, gone in an instant of blind rage. Gloria's gaze fell on a length of rope in the corner. With trembling hands, she fashioned a noose. I'm sorry, she murmured to no one in particular, as she slipped it around her neck. As she kicked the chair away, her last thought was of the note she'd left on the table. It explained everything. How a man she loved had ruined her life, how she'd unknowingly given her heart to a devil in disguise. It all began a few months ago, when Gloria was abandoned by Eric, who left her and moved on with another woman. Gloria sat on her couch, tears rushing down her face as she cried. She felt used again, her heart aching with familiar pain. Why does this always happen to me? Gloria sobbed, hugging a pillow tightly. She had always wanted a man who would cherish and love her like a queen. Instead, she kept getting used over and over again. This was the fifth time she had been abandoned by a man she loved. Eric had seemed different. Gloria thought back to their first date, how special he made her feel. You're unlike anyone I've ever met, Gloria, Eric had said, his eyes twinkling. I can really see a future with you. Those words had made her heart sore. She felt so loved after meeting him. Eric had promised he would make her his wife someday. But it was all fake promises. He used her and abandoned her, just like the other men did. 
Gloria's mind replayed the moment Eric ended things. Now, alone in her apartment, Gloria felt like maybe I didn't deserve a man in my life. Maybe marriage wasn't destined for me. I kept falling for men who ended up breaking my heart. Gloria muttered, wiping her eyes. She remembered catching her exes cheating with another woman. The memory made fresh tears fall. And now Eric, whom she taught was her husband, had broken up with her and moved on with someone new. Gloria reached for her phone, scrolling through old messages from Eric. Can't wait to see you tonight, beautiful. You mean the world to me, one read. Liar, Gloria whispered, deleting the message. She felt so foolish. How could she have believed him? As night fell, Gloria remained on the couch, feeling sad and used. The thought of trying to love again seemed impossible. No more, she said to the empty room. I can't keep doing this to myself. With a heavy heart, Gloria decided to focus on herself and her restaurant business. Love had brought her nothing but pain. As she finally stood up from the couch, her legs shaky, she made a silent promise to herself. No more men, no more broken hearts. Gloria couldn't handle the news of Eric breaking up with her. She needed someone to talk to, so she picked up her phone with shaky hands and called Anita, her childhood friend. Anita, can you come over right now? I really need you, Gloria said, her voice cracking. I'll be there in a few minutes, Anita replied, hearing the distress in her friend's voice. Soon after, Anita arrived at Gloria's place. She found Gloria sitting on the couch, tears streaming down her face. Hey Gloria, what's wrong this time? Why are you crying? Anita asked, concerned. I passed by your restaurant and it was closed. What's going on with you? Gloria could barely speak. She just cried harder, her body shaking with each sob. Anita, it happened again. My worst fear. Gloria finally managed to say between sobs. Anita sat down next to her friend, putting an arm around her shoulders. Please, talk to me. You're scaring me. What happened? Gloria took a deep breath and started explaining. Eric, he showed up today. He broke up with me, just like that. What? Just like that he broke up with you? Anita asked, shocked. Yes. Gloria nodded, wiping her eyes. I'm so disappointed. What did I do to deserve this? I trusted Eric completely. Anita's heart broke, seeing her friend in so much pain. She knew all Gloria wanted was to find a man who would love her, but men kept hurting her instead. Oh, Gloria, Anita sighed. I've told you so many times, men are demons. You should stay away from them for a while. Gloria shook her head. But I'm almost 40, Anita. It's too late for me to not be married yet. I need to find someone. I know, I know. Anita said softly. But look where it's gotten you. You keep getting hurt. I've told you before, just stay away from men for now. Soon you'll find someone who truly loves you. Anita couldn't believe what Eric had done. After all the money you spent on Eric, he still decided to hurt you like this. Men are really wicked, she said, anger creeping into her voice. For the next few hours, Anita stayed with Gloria. She tried to cheer her up and give her advice. Listen to me, Gloria, Anita said, holding her friend's hands. Eric doesn't deserve you. You're a wonderful person, and someday you'll find someone much better. Someone who appreciates you. Gloria nodded, but didn't look convinced. I don't know if I can go through this again, Anita. It hurts too much. I know it does, Anita replied. But you're strong. You'll get through this, just like you did before. And I'll be here to help you every step of the way. As the night went on, Gloria's tears slowly stopped. She was exhausted, but grateful for her friend's support. Thank you for coming over, Anita, Gloria said. I don't know what I'd do without you. Anita smiled and gave her a hug. That's what friends are for. Now get some rest. Tomorrow is a new day, and we'll face it together. Gloria owned a popular restaurant in the city of Lagos. She was a successful businesswoman, but she couldn't find a man to trust. All her past relationships felt like being with the devil. After Eric left her, Gloria decided to follow her friend's advice and stay away from men. She pushed thoughts of relationships out of her mind and focused on her restaurant. 
I need to stop thinking about men, Gloria told herself one morning. My business is what matters now. She started making plans to grow her restaurant. Gloria spent hours at her desk, writing ideas in her notebook. Maybe I could add new dishes to the menu, she muttered, or start a delivery service. As days passed, Gloria found herself thinking less about Eric and the other men who hurt her. Instead, her mind was full of business ideas. As she worked, Gloria realized she hadn't thought about Eric all day. She felt proud of herself for moving on and focusing on what truly mattered, her success. Gloria's decision to focus on her business brought many changes to her life. She stopped worrying about men and became deeply attached to her restaurant. Sometimes she would spend time with her friend Anita, enjoying life without romantic complications. However, this peace didn't last long. After her experience with Alex, Gloria found it difficult to interact with men. She barely spoke to male customers in her restaurant, and occasionally, she would shout at them over minor issues. One day, Anita noticed these changes in Gloria's behavior. As Gloria sat in her restaurant, Anita approached her with concern. Gloria, I think you're taking this too far, Anita said gently. I know you were hurt by five different men, but that's not a good reason to treat your male customers badly. Gloria's face scrunched up in confusion and annoyance. What do you mean? How am I treating my male customers badly? I'm busy in the kitchen. If you're not serious, I need to get back to work, she snapped. Anita sighed. Gloria, I've known you since we were kids. I can tell when you're sad or when your behavior changes. I saw how you spoke to that male customer earlier. It was really harsh. So what? Gloria replied angrily. Yes, I spoke harshly to the customer. Why is that your problem? He's my customer, not yours. I'm your friend, Gloria, Anita said firmly. It's my job to tell you when you're going down the wrong path. Don't let what your exes did affect how you treat your customers. Remember, your business can't survive without them. With that, Anita left, leaving Gloria to think about her words. As Gloria stood alone in the kitchen, she knew deep down that she was becoming too hard on people, especially men. The memory of what Eric did to her had planted a seed of hatred towards all men. She had promised herself never to be in a relationship again, but the fear of abandonment was changing her in ways she hadn't expected. Maybe Anita's right, Gloria muttered to herself, stirring a pot absent-mindedly. But how can I trust any man after what I've been through? Gloria thought about Anita's words again. I can't let my past ruin my business, she said to herself. I need to find a way to deal with this. So one day, while Gloria was busy at her restaurant, a gentle young man walked in. He was dark-skinned, tall, and very handsome. It was his first time coming to the restaurant. He sat down quietly, waiting for someone to serve him. After a few minutes, Gloria approached his table. The young man noticed her unfriendly expression. I'm sorry, madam, I hope all is well. From the way you look at me, it's just strange, Alex said politely. Gloria snapped at him. Hey, be careful. What's your problem? Just do what brought you here and leave. Or maybe you don't want to eat anything from my restaurant. Alex was shocked by Gloria's harsh response. He sensed something might be wrong with her. I'm really sorry, madam, if I made you angry. I was just concerned. Please accept my apologies, Alex said, trying to calm the situation. You should be sorry for yourself and next time don't try that, Gloria retorted. She then took his order and left without another word. A few minutes after Alex finished eating, he reached for his wallet but couldn't find it. He searched all his pockets frantically. This should not be happening, Alex muttered worriedly to himself. How can I misplace my wallet? That wallet has everything. How am I supposed to pay for the food I ate? Gloria watched him from afar, curious about what was happening. She approached Alex and demanded, What's the problem? By the way, you're done with the food. You should pay now before leaving. Alex continued searching himself, looking left and right, but still couldn't find his wallet. Gloria's anger was rising. Young man, it's time you pay, she shouted. Please, you don't understand, Alex tried to explain. I came here with my wallet, but now I can't find it. Without that, I don't have any other way of paying. 
Gloria's anger intensified as she listened. She grabbed Alex by his clothes, shouting that he was a criminal pretending to have lost his wallet. I am not a criminal, Alex pleaded. I only lost my money. Please give me a few minutes to find it. I will be back immediately to pay you for the food. But Gloria wouldn't listen. She forced Alex to wash a large number of plates at the restaurant before she would let him leave. This humiliating punishment made other customers laugh at Alex, mocking him and making him feel terrible. Later that day, Anita came to Gloria's restaurant to check on her friend. The two women talked for a long time. Gloria seemed happier with Anita around. They had been friends since childhood and shared a strong bond. While chatting, Gloria told Anita about the young man who visited her restaurant earlier. He was handsome and very gentle, Gloria said. I couldn't believe it. After everything I said to him, making him feel disgraced, he still acted nice and gentle with me. Anita frowned, disappointed in her friend's behavior. This wasn't the Gloria she knew. Her friend used to be loving, caring, kind and generous. But what Eric did had changed her, slowly turning her into someone harsh, especially towards men. Gloria, I don't think it was right to treat that young man that way, Anita said. You should show some respect. I know you're angry because of what Eric did to you, but please remember, not every man out there is like Eric. You should apologize to that young man. Gloria looked down, avoiding Anita's eyes. She knew her friend was right, but it was hard for her to admit it. I know, Anita, Gloria sighed. But it's so hard to trust anyone after what happened. I understand, Anita replied gently. But you can't punish every man for Eric's mistakes. It's not fair, and it's not like you. They talked for a while longer before Anita left. As Gloria closed up the restaurant and went home, she couldn't shake off the feeling of guilt. For the first time in a long while, she felt bad about how she had treated someone, especially that young man. At home, Gloria couldn't sleep. She tossed and turned in bed, replaying the day's events in her mind. The young man's face, shocked and hurt by her words, kept appearing in her thoughts. What have I become? Gloria whispered to herself in the dark. All through the night, Gloria felt guilty and disappointed in herself. She realized she had let her pain turn her into someone she didn't recognize or like. The kind, caring Gloria seemed so far away now. As dawn approached, Gloria made a decision. She would try to find that young man and apologize. It was a small step, but maybe it could be the beginning of finding her old self again. As the sun rose, Gloria got up, dressed, and went straight to her restaurant. She couldn't stop thinking about what happened the day before, and it made her feel bad. She knew she wasn't a bad person. She was just angry at men because of her bad experiences with five others. When she got to the restaurant, she was surprised to see the same man she had been mean to yesterday. He was standing there, waiting for her. Seeing him made Gloria worry. She wished she hadn't treated him so badly, but before she could say sorry, the young man spoke first. I'm sorry, madam, I brought your money, he said, giving the money to Gloria. Like I said, I had misplaced my wallet. Gloria felt even worse. No, 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 I should be the one saying sorry. I'm sorry for treating you so harshly. I don't know what came over me, she said. The young man shook his head. You shouldn't apologize. You're just a businesswoman doing your job. I should go now, he said, turning to leave. But Gloria stopped him. Wait, you're such a nice young man. Can I ask your name? It's Alex, he said, and then left. For the rest of the day, Gloria couldn't stop thinking about Alex and how kind he was. He even brought back the money after she had embarrassed him. It showed how good he was, she thought. Later, when Anita came to visit, Gloria told her everything about Alex returning the money and how she had apologized to him. He's handsome, though, Gloria added, without thinking. Anita's eyes widened. Wait, don't tell me you like him already. No, stop, Gloria protested. But Anita wasn't listening. Oh yes, you do like him. My friend is finally in love again, Anita shouted excitedly. I'm not in love with anyone, Gloria insisted. I'm just saying he's handsome and gentle. The two friends laughed together, enjoying the moment. 
That evening, as Gloria went home after closing the restaurant, she couldn't get Alex and his kindness out of her mind. She had promised herself not to fall for any man again, but after meeting Alex and seeing how gentle he was, things seemed to be changing. She realized she might be falling for this stranger she barely knew. As she tried to sleep that night, Gloria felt confused. Should she keep her promise to stay away from men completely? Or should she give herself another chance? Maybe she could find someone better this time. Gloria tossed and turned, unable to decide. Part of her wanted to trust again, to believe that not all men were like those who had hurt her. But another part was scared of being hurt again. What should I do, she whispered to herself in the darkness. The question echoed in her mind as she finally drifted off to sleep, her dreams filled with images of Alex's kind smile. The next day at Gloria's restaurant, while she was busy serving customers, she saw a young man walk in. It was Alex, the man she had quarreled with before. She was surprised to see him back after how she treated him, but Alex seemed gentle and simple. Gloria quickly approached him. Good morning, she said with a smile. What would you like to eat today? We have many dishes to choose from. Alex looked impressed and surprised at Gloria's friendliness. There was no anger on her face, just a warm smile. They started chatting and got along well. As they talked, Alex shared some things about himself. I'm single, he said. I used to work for a company, but I lost my job when the building burned down. My fiancé left me because of it. I begged her to stay, but she refused. Gloria felt sad hearing his story. I'm so sorry for everything you've been through, she said softly. It must be hard to lose your job and your fiancé at the same time. Thank you for your concern, Alex replied. Can you tell me about yourself? I'd love to know how you started this successful restaurant. Gloria's face fell. Thinking about her past made her sad. She tried to speak, but tears started rolling down her cheeks. Alex quickly put his hand on her shoulder and wiped her tears. I'm sorry if my question upset you, he said gently. No, don't be sorry, Gloria said, taking a deep breath. I'm okay. It's just that thinking about my past reminds me of my bad experiences with men. She then told Alex how five different men had used and abandoned her after claiming to love her. Alex listened carefully, feeling sad for Gloria. This must be why she was so rude to me when I first came here, he thought to himself. That's terrible, Alex said out loud. No wonder you were upset the other day. I'm sorry you went through all that. Gloria nodded, wiping away the last of her tears. Thank you for understanding. It's been hard to trust anyone after all that. I can imagine, Alex said. But not all men are like that, you know. Some of us are decent people who keep our word. Gloria managed a small smile. I'm starting to see that, she said, looking at Alex. They continued talking for a while, sharing more about their lives and experiences. Gloria found herself enjoying Alex's company, despite her initial hesitation. As Alex was leaving, he turned to Gloria. Thank you for sharing your story with me. I hope we can talk again sometime. Gloria nodded. I'd like that, she said, surprised to find she really meant it. After Alex left, Gloria felt a mix of emotions. She was confused about her feelings but also hopeful. Maybe, just maybe, there were still good men in the world. After that day, Alex and Gloria became good friends. They exchanged phone numbers and often called to check on each other. Gloria told Anita everything about Alex and their new friendship. Anita was happy for Gloria, seeing her friend finally allow a man into her life again after so long. Alex seems like a good guy, Anita said. Don't be afraid to move forward with him. He has a good heart. You two could make a nice couple. I'm really jealous of you now, Anita added with a laugh. Gloria laughed too. No, no, don't be jealous. Alex hasn't even asked me out yet. We're just good friends, but I think he has feelings for me. I hope he asks me out soon. What Gloria didn't know was that Alex wasn't really in love with her. He was only pretending because Gloria was a successful businesswoman with money. He planned to use their friendship to get money from her. Alex seemed simple and gentle, but it was all an act. He had never worked for a company or lost a job as he claimed. But Gloria was falling for him 
and couldn't see through his lies. It was a bright morning when Gloria's phone rang. It was Alex asking to meet urgently to discuss something important. Gloria quickly left everything she was doing and rushed to meet Alex. He was waiting for her at a small restaurant. As they sat down, Alex looked nervous. Gloria, he began, I know I'm not in the best place with my job right now, but I need to tell you how I feel about you. I don't know if this will work out between us. Maybe you don't feel the same way? Gloria's heart raced. This was exactly what she had been hoping for. I'm so excited, she blurted out. I love you too, Alex. I feel the same way. Just promise you won't abandon me like Eric did. Alex took her hand. I will never abandon you. You can trust me. Gloria felt overjoyed. She thought she had finally found a man who truly loved her, someone who would stay with her forever. But Gloria was wrong. What she didn't know was that Alex had evil plans. He didn't really love her at all. Alex actually had a woman in his village that he wanted to marry. He had already introduced this woman to his parents and wanted to pay her dowry. Alex was just pretending to love Gloria because she had money. He planned to use Gloria to get the money he needed for his real girlfriend's dowry. So, what should we do now? Gloria asked, still holding Alex's hand. Well, Alex said, putting on a loving smile, maybe we could spend more time together, get to know each other better. Gloria nodded eagerly, completely unaware of Alex's true intentions. Later that evening, Gloria was so excited she couldn't contain herself. She wanted to share the news with her friend Anita right away. Gloria quickly grabbed her phone and called Anita, asking her to come over immediately. A few minutes later, Anita arrived at Gloria's apartment, looking worried. Hey, what's up? What's so important that I had to drop everything and come over? Anita asked anxiously. Gloria was grinning from ear to ear. Just guess. Guess what happened, she said excitedly. Anita shook her head, confused. I have no idea. What is it? Okay, I'll tell you. Gloria shouted happily, Alex just asked me out, and I said yes. Anita's face lit up as she watched her friend. Gloria was beaming with joy, happier than Anita had seen her in a long time. This was exactly what Anita had been hoping for her friend. I'm so happy for you, Gloria, Anita exclaimed, hugging her friend tightly. The two women decided to celebrate. They popped open a bottle of wine and clinked their glasses together. To new beginnings, Gloria said, her eyes sparkling. To finding love again, Anita added. They spent the next hour chatting and laughing, with Gloria sharing every detail of Alex's confession. Neither of them knew that their celebration was premature. They had no idea that Alex had more sinister plans in store, plans that would hurt Gloria more than she could imagine. One month into her relationship with Alex, Gloria felt things were going well. Alex was supposedly looking for a new job, while Gloria helped him out with small amounts of money when she could. Alex had a friend named Jerry. They'd been close for a long time and had much in common. One day, Alex decided to introduce Jerry to Gloria. He brought him to Gloria's restaurant, telling her Jerry was his childhood friend. Gloria smiled warmly. Nice to meet you, Jerry. I'll get you both something to eat and drink. She hurried off to the kitchen. While Gloria was gone, Jerry leaned in close to Alex. Bro, your woman has this big restaurant and you're still broke. Come on, you need to wise up, Jerry said, shaking his head. Alex glanced around to make sure Gloria wasn't nearby. Hey, what do you mean? I've been taking small amounts of money from her and saving it. I don't really love her, I just want her money, remember? Jerry scoffed. That's not enough. If you really want her money, you need to think bigger. She'll figure out you don't love her eventually. You need to get as much as you can now. But how? Alex asked, leaning in closer. Jerry whispered something in Alex's ear. Both men laughed wickedly. That's a brilliant idea, Alex said, grinning. You're a true friend. Just then, Gloria returned with drinks and food. She smiled as she served them, unaware of their sinister conversation. Here you go, boys. Enjoy, she said cheerfully. Thanks, babe, Alex said, forcing a smile. This looks great. As Gloria walked away, Jerry winked at Alex. They clinked their glasses, both thinking about their devious plan. 
That evening, Alex lay in bed, mulling over Jerry's suggestion. He grinned to himself in the darkness. This is it, he thought. This plan will change everything. I'll finally get all I want. I can pay the dowry for the woman I really love back in the village. We'll move to another state, start a family, and I'll leave this ugly, smelly woman behind. She's just unlucky enough to own a shop I can exploit. Alex chuckled to himself, already imagining his future with his true love. He felt no remorse for Gloria, seeing her only as a means to an end. Tomorrow, he muttered as he drifted off to sleep, I'll start putting this plan into action. Poor Gloria won't know what hit her. If you're eager to see how this story unfolds, please subscribe and let us know in the comments below. Type continue. If you want to see episode 2, your feedback will help shape future videos on this channel.